You know my sewing space. I have everything organized just where I need it. And occasionally this room turns into a third bedroom. Well, now I have two children that live out of province. And in the past couple of months, it's been more like a guest bedroom that's occasionally a sewing room. It has seriously messed with my sojo. So in this video, it's my new studio tour. There's an Ikea hack, a new sewing setup, and hopefully I'll find my groove again. So stick with me and I'll show you how I did it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. In the beginning of 2022, one of my sons and his partner moved out west to BC. Then my daughter and her fiance moved out east to Quebec. And that means that my Murphy bed is seeing more than its fair share of use. And it's not just that I don't have my sewing space. It means I need to stop projects that I'm working on, pack them up, and when my family's gone home, I have to try and figure out what and where I was up to. And that really seriously messes with my sojo. I never want my family to feel unwelcome, so I need to find a solution. So I have this studio space. You've seen it before, it's where my long arm is, it's where I do my editing, give lectures from, and it's also where I film my interview series. Last fall, I moved my main set here because I wanted it out of my bedroom. And I showed you how I made my new YouTube setup in this video here. And before now, I had avoided sewing in this space completely as I didn't want to manage two separate setups. I know friends that have two homes and they are always complaining about constantly moving things back and forth and when they need something, it's always in the other location. Plus here, the furniture and the layout is awkward. My previous attempts to sew here have been very uncomfortable. But if I want my family to visit, I need that extra bedroom back home. So this space will have to work and I'm gonna start from scratch. Over the past few months, I've been looking at various tables and desks and trying to find that magic size. Big enough to cut on, big enough to shoot on, and with some storage to help manage all the projects in the videos I have in play. Oh, and I need it to be able to move around as well. And I couldn't find anything anywhere that checked all my boxes. So I decided to design my own. I'm going to take some Ikea bookcases and mount them on a sheet of wood, place an island butcher's block on top, and then put the whole thing on casters. So it's a trip to Ikea to buy the Calyx bookcases and the countertop, and a trip to Home Depot to buy the wood. And I took advantage of their cutting service to cut my board to size. I do like puzzles, so I love assembling Ikea furniture. And since I've made this bookcase before, it's not long till I have them all assembled. I do a quick check to be sure that it fits on the MDF board. To get the counter size top that I want, I need to leave a gap between the bookcases, but that's fine, I'll store some longer things in there. I am concerned about these corners on the front. These will be exposed. I don't want to trip over and damage them with use. First, I make a diagonal cut on the front corners. Then I use a router to smooth down the edges. Hopefully this solves the problem. Then it's time to put on the casters. I've recruited my son to give me a hand and my husband volunteered himself, so I have plenty of help. And I have Mando here for emotional support. Then I mark where I want the casters to sit. Because of the size of the table, I'm using six so that it doesn't bow in the middle. I will be attaching the casters to the MDF board with bolts. However, the bookcase will not sit flush that way, which means I need to countersink the bolts into the MDF so the bookcase lies flat. And luckily, I know a guy who has all the tools. So far, so good. We lay the bookcases on their side and add the smaller one to the front, and it fits perfectly. 
when I had Home Depot cut my board to size. I also had them cut the remainder, so I had these small boards to secure the bookcase. The walls of the Calyx units are just corrugated cardboard. We trim them to the size of the cubbies. So having a firm piece of wood here will help keep it secure. We screwed them into the lower back side of both sides of the bookcase. We add the island to the top. This is heavy and I'm glad I've got the extra hands. And at my husband's suggestion, we align it to one side so there's an overhang on the other that I can sit up to. Can you tell how pleased I am? So how did I do on my list? Big working service at 42 by 72. I think I nailed that. Lots of storage. I might even have too much storage here. I pre-measured everything. So then I ordered the casters in the correct size to get the height I needed. And it was worth the effort to make it movable. Is it attractive? Well, I'm totally biased on that one. With my new cutting table in place, I knew that my old folding table was not going to work as a sewing table. My second machine, my Bernina 750, needed better support to do its best work. And I found this Husky table at Home Depot. Again, I love puzzles, so there was no problem grabbing a spanner and putting it together. Mando wasn't very patient though, as it meant his new walk was postponed. I've had my eye on this table for a while. The butcher block wood on top matches my countertop and it has a crank on it, raises the top to standing height. So if I ever need a larger project surface, I can align it to my cutting table so I can spread out even more. I have so much random stuff in this space collected over several years. Some is from when we originally moved in. Some of it has migrated from my home. I even have stuff that my kids have dropped off from when they moved. And in the past couple of weeks with the declutter challenge, I have really been able to clean a lot of it out. I decided if my husband wants it, it can go in his part of the building. I have filled my donation box, plus I've made many trips to the recycling bin and garbage. I still need to go through my office desk and my stationary supplies. And I do have a couple of pieces of furniture that I want to get out but I'm gonna work on these one drawer at a time in the coming weeks. My next step in this space is to recreate my sewing space from home that I love so much so that I can use the same muscle memory. And that means having the same tools in the same place, or at least as much as possible. Putting the thread catchers, pin cushions, and snips on my right hand side. Putting my gloves, my roller, and my scissors on the left. A big difference is that my sewing triangle is bigger. My rotary cutters and my rulers are over here with my cutting table. And I'm using my old iron and a wool pressing mat at this end of the table as my ironing station. I also need to decide on some rules of what I do here versus what I do at home. For instance, since I keep all my long arm threads here, I'm just going to use king spools here. And I've brought my baby quilt kits here so at home, I'm free to work on new projects. I know this is still a work in progress. I don't have all the answers yet. Over the year, I'm gonna test my plans and ideas and make changes as necessary. So stay tuned. If you are interested in organizing your sewing space, I'll leave a link to that playlist here. If you've missed my declutter challenge or you need to catch up, I'll also put a link to that one here. Take care and I'll see you next time.